Welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all, and this is the new 1989 Freelux by F19 Mods. Now, it is based on a late 80s to early 90s Toyota pickup, and it is fully console-friendly, although at the time of recording this video, it still needs to be approved by the devs. Now, we're going to go ahead and go into the garage, go through the customization options, and then take it out for a rip and see what it's like to drive. Now, this truck is built around the idea of a realistic trail rig, and it's kind of going to be, for those of you that that are primarily interested in either having a scout truck or having a truck that you can take out on some mild to moderate trails and enjoy without feeling like you're driving something that's over the top. Now, engines wise, we have a 1.8 liter um, inline four, we have a 2.4 liter 22 RE, and then we have a three liter three VZ. Um, and that one is probably, yeah, we'll do the three liter. I know that uh, the, the, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of uh, Toyota people out there that are gonna be upset that we didn't do the two four, but we'll come back and do the 2.4 in a future adventure. Now, gearbox-wise, we've got the stock, the crawler, the off-road, and the highway use. We're going to do the off-road gearbox because for the map that we're on, which is currently Tassie Trailing, we're not going to need the crawler gearbox, uh, but the off-road gearbox should do just fine. We have a few different suspension options. We've got a 2-inch lift, we have a 4-inch lift, and then we have a 6-inch lift. The 6-inch lift is actually higher in the rear than it is in the front. The 4-inch lift looks like it's it looks like it's going to be a little bit more almost like travel friendly it looks like it's going to be a little bit more flexible whereas the six inch lift looks a little stretched so i think what we'll do is we'll actually do the four inch lift i think the four inch lift will work really well for us on this particular uh build now we're gonna do i'm thinking yeah i'm thinking we'll do a set of 35 inch these actually look like uh, Nitto Trail Grapplers, and so those actually, they look really beefy on here, especially with the 4-inch lift, Th and they actually, that looks like a really beefy, really realistic setup. I dig that. Now, let's throw the trail equipment in the back, and then frame add-ons wise, we got a roll bar, which is very period correct. We also have the aero roll bar, and we have a bed rack tent, which I'm gonna do the bed rack tent, because I think that looks amazing, and I've seen a lot of Toyota pickups from this generation running um, rack tents like that, and it's such a nice setup. Up. Now, fenders-wise, let's see. We'll throw some rock sliders on here for sure. And then, what else does this require? Oh, the bull bar. Okay. So, let's see. We've got a custom bumper that we can do. We've got a custom, actually, two different custom bumpers. And then, we could also go with the stock one if that's more our speed. I think we're going to go with this one because I kind of, I really dig the low-profile look. Now, front bumper, let's see. We've got a bull bar option. We've got a stock bumper. And we've also got a comp bar. I'm a little back and forth, actually. I'm debating upon whether or not I want to do this or this. And I think I might do, you know, I think I might do this, actually, the bull bar. Now, let's see, bonnet entry snorkel, we'll do that. Custom beadlock wheels, stock wheels, or classic steelies are all available. I'm going to do the custom beadlocks. And then colors-wise, you've actually got a tremendous range of options, even with a very, very late 80s, early 90s style uh, paint job right here. Actually, there's a couple of different designs that you can run. I like this one a lot, and so I'm going to run it in probably uh, I was thinking about the red, but I was also thinking about the blue. I think I'll run it in the red. The red looks really, really good. And we'll go ahead and throw beans on the dash. And then now we'll get this thing out on the trail and see what it's like to drive. It sounds good. It's got a very kind of stock slash like vanilla-esque sound. But I think that that actually suits this truck really, really nicely. Now, let's go into the interior. Oh, look at that. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing over the top, but it's very realistic and very like directly to the point. You know what I mean? Like this is what these trucks are like on the inside. Let's see. Let's see how these, um, these moving gauges work. Oh, look at that. You can see the tack moving. Oh, that's amazing. See the speedometer moving and everything as we get on it down the road. That looks so good. So if you are into uh, interior view, this is definitely a mod that you're going to enjoy playing around with. So once we get out of town here, we can... Oh my god, don't hit the tree, thank you. God, we were carrying some pretty good pace. I mean, keep in mind this is a, air quotes here, off-road gearbox, so... Keep in mind that we were carrying some pretty serious pace with that. So I am I am not at all upset about that level of pace. Like, that's plenty of pace 
for driving down the road. Now, I've still got it in automatic mode right now, but I did throw the all-wheel drive on, and diff lock is only available in low range. So if you're not a fan of, you know, trucks that require you to be in low range to use the diff lock, you might not be as big of a fan of using this thing, but that definitely speaks to the want to keep this a more, you know, air quotes, like kind of vanilla-ish balanced vehicle because the vanilla game vehicles all, well, not all, but a lot of them, especially a lot of the scouts, run a setup where you have to be in low range to use the diff lock, unless it's a uh, diff lock all the time, but that's pretty rare for vanilla game vehicles. So let's go ahead and get to the top of this hill. We're really, like, shredding on this thing right now. I'm not quite sure if I would, like, unless I was really trying to get somewhere, I don't know if I would always shred on this thing like this. Where does that go? Oh, yo, what's this? What? I'm, I'm curious. I am quite curious. And actually, there's another trail down here at the end that goes to the right. I think I'm going to take that. That one seems a little bit more... That one seems a little bit more interesting. The one to the right that was right back there seemed a little bit on the incomplete side, at least from what I saw from the overhead view on the map. So I'm going to just ignore that one for now, and then we'll come back and try it out again later. This is really comfy, though, on the trail. The suspension travel is nice. The 4-inch the lift is a really balanced place for it to be. Now, I haven't tried the 6-inch lift yet. But I gotta say, the performance that I'm getting out of the 4-inch lift kit is really good, and I definitely am not looking for extra performance, at least not on trails like this. Now, let's see. We do have a trail right here that runs along the river's edge, so we're gonna go ahead and take that, because we always tend to go to the left here. So this time, we're gonna go to the right, and we're gonna see how this thing does once we get it into some slightly gnarlier terrain. Now, this is gonna be, obviously, not insane. It's not gonna be rock crawling or anything like that, but it's definitely along the line of terrain you would encounter in the real world and oh yeah you could definitely tell that's where the mud starts all right so low plus lockers on let's see how you do we may have to back it off down to low but we'll see how low plus does first it's doing okay it's not like it's not you know stopping but you could definitely tell that it's been slowed down a bit God, these early 90s, well, late 80s, early 90s, this is an 89, but late 80s, early 90s Toyota pickups were such great platforms to build just about whatever you wanted. You could build a crawler, you could build a overlander, you could build a daily driver, you could build a camping rig, you could just leave it stock and drive it as is. They were always great trucks. Now, obviously, Every vehicle has its weak points, and these were no exception. They had their weak points as well, but obviously with them being kind of from, still from that era of Toyotas where you could essentially throw them at a house and they would start again. I mean, you really didn't have all that much to worry about, even when you were taking these things out in the middle of nowhere. Come on, find some grip, find some grip, find some grip. We're working the wheel a little bit just to see if we can put some power down. And you can definitely see it is trying. It is trying hard. Here we go. Maybe if I put half of it in the grass, because I don't want to just sit here the entire time. You know what I mean? I don't want to just sit in the, uh, like, in the mud. Although the creator of the map might have thought about this strategy and might have made the grass muddy as well, which I think they have. Yeah, I think they predicted these shenanigans and were like, aha, the grass is going to be muddy as well. Get used to that. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, they were like, you're not going to go around my mud. I put this mud here for a reason and you are going to drive through it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Are you sure about that? And they're like, oh, I'm sure that I'm sure because I made the place. And I'm like, oh, okay. How much farther does this go before it, like, actually turns into a trail where you're climbing up things? I haven't really had much experience on this trail section at all. So that's going to be low with everything on, and it looks like the trail just goes into the river. Well, that's delightful, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's just great. That's just absolutely fine and dandy, isn't it? I did not want to go into the river right off the bat, but I suppose that's where we are headed. That was not my plan. That was not my plan whatsoever, but I think the trail had other plans for us um, that were outside of my scope of planning um, because my scope of planning was not within the trail's scope of planning.
What does this look like from the interior cam? Oh, that looks gnarly. The water's like right here. Can you imagine going through something like this in real life? Cue up all the people that are about to go to the comments and say, I've done trails that are 10 million times harder than that in real life. This is nothing. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm sure you have. Really lean in here. This is actually super realistic. As far as trail design goes, like you will encounter scenarios exactly like the one we just went through in the real world on a lot of different trails. Can we get through here, please? Or are we like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Maybe a little bit of a pull, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. And there you go. Oh, we got some momentum now. Send it. Oh no. Oh no. Come on, just a little bit. Dude, just a little bit. Like, I am really trying to, like, oh, I see the trail. I see where it meets. Yes, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. This thing needs a victory. We are so close to a freaking victory. This mud almost stopped us, but, like, it's, it's pretty insane what this thing is capable of, and it feels very realistic. It feels very well thought out. It feels very well tuned and it feels like it gives you that experience that if you're looking to play SnowRunner for an experience of realism, especially for the terrain deformation, this is built for that. This is built to deliver that realistic experience that you're looking for, both both in terms of realistic interaction with the terrain and realistic vehicle performance as well. All right, almost there and come on and I'm going to call that a win. Yeah, we made that. All right, you know what? Real quick, let's see if we can climb this muddy hill. Since we're here, I really want to attempt it. Let's see. Come on. Full beans, little Toyota. Let's go. Dude, that's so sick. I love this little truck. This little truck is so good. Not only is it good because of what it is, but it's good because I think when you have maps like Tassie Trailing and you combine them with vehicles like this, that's about as realistic as it gets in SnowRunner, for at least for this style of vehicle. But if y'all enjoyed this vehicle highlight video, then let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.